Good time of day, guys. My name is Godzi, and welcome back to another episode of Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter 7, Minagaroshi. Last episode, uh, Shion talked a lot about wanting to kill Tepe, and Rika was just bored because apparently that's all happened before. And then phone calls and stuff. Mion and Keiichi talked, Keiichi and Rena talked. It was a lot of talking. Which, no shit, but... <laughs> Anyways, uh, nothing else to say. Let's just get into this. Dad, I have something I want to talk to you about. Huh? Uh, what it, what's this? Is it about the auction at the, at the coming festival? You have my full support. Uh, speaking of which, when is the next festival committee meeting? Uh, they called me to participate too. I'll have to mark my calendar. Oh, it's not about that. My classmate is in trouble. As I talked about Satoko, my mom joined us and listened as well. My dad is a strange artist, but my mom is a normal person with common sense. She might be able to help. It's kind of awkward starting these episodes at a point where there's not any music. <laughs> I just got a call and found out that they put her case on hold. We're wondering what we should do now. They already called the Child Consultation Center, so you should let them take care of it. But she was being abused last year, too, right? I don't know how bad it was, but I think it's wrong for him to force her to move out of her friend's place. He was neglecting her for a year after all. We can't just wait and see what happens just because the consultation center said to. We're her friends, so we want to be more aggressive about saving her. But we have no idea how we can do that. Keiichi, don't even think about attacking him. I'm not. I wouldn't talk to you guys if that was on my mind. That's true. That's... <laughs> I was about to say, well, he did talk to you, but... <laughs> I thought you might ask us how to commit a perfect crime. Hey, I would never ask my parents something like that. I think. Keiichi, you're right. There are many battles in this world, but it's always important that you follow the rules. People won't help you if you're going to break them, and they won't respect you either. You have to fight according to the rules. Are there even rules for battles? Well, anyway, do you have any ideas? My parents have been alive for more than twice as long as me. They must have had some experience with things like this. They must have many good ideas. At least, that's what I thought. But they crossed their arms and went silent. Calling the Child Consultation Center is the first thing you should do. But what do you do if that doesn't work? Do you think... We can even rely on the law? Do you think the police won't do anything until Satoko is seriously injured? I think you have to make an appeal. Appeal? What, you mean sue him? That's not it. The Child Consultation Center is supposed to take care of the child abuse cases. But if you're unsatisfied with the decision they make... Make an appeal to the court? Keiichi, you go to court when you can't resolve an issue with the person you're dealing with. It's the final place you go to. You want the Child Consultation Center to protect Satoko-chan, right? But they made a decision that you disagree with. And? Okay. <laughs> ah, and the sounds come back. <laughs> the awkward silence is gone. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have felt so awkward if it were the middle of the video, but whatever. We need to make an appeal to the Child Consultation Center! If we're unsatisfied with the decision they made, we can simply go and tell them that. We need to go there and explain to them how serious this case is. Yeah, that sounds good. They have no idea what situation Satago-chan is in right now. Since they're misunderstanding what's going on, we have to go there and make it clear. I see. That's the best approach. I don't know about that. I've heard that they never change their decisions once made. Might just be a waste of time. We don't know that until we try. Giving up before even trying is what losers do. We have to try everything we can. Remember what the principal said? We'll fail if we give up before even trying. Shion, your fire is blazing bright red, ready to do whatever it takes, even if that's acting hasty, to save Satoko. But truly hot fire is blue and calm. Don't give up. We should do everything we can. What do you think, Chie-sensei? Am I wrong? No. You're not saying anything wrong. 
You've come down a lot. I was concerned for you because I thought you might come up with an idea to attack him in the dark. That's what my mom was saying. Is that how people perceive me? I thought we should wait and see what happens. But after hearing everything all of you have said, and thinking about what happened last year, I now understand that this is an emergency situation. People can change their minds if you're persuasive enough. The Child Consultation Center might change their mind too. They might reserve their decision, reverse their decision if you succeed in making an appeal. What do you think, Shichan? You should fight with us rather than thinking about it alone. I'm not feeling lonely. I'm not sad because I'm all alone. You do sound awfully sad, actually. Maybe you do want to join us? <sighs> Whatever. Fine then. Let's just go to the Child Consultation Center. I'm going to punch them in their faces if they don't do something. That's not a good idea, but I feel your passion now. I guess you calm down after getting some sleep. I'm just serious about this is all. <laughs> anyway, let's go and make it happen. I know where the Child Consultation Center is. This old man didn't know until recently, but it's on the first floor of the library. Really? It was there? I thought it was its own separate building. Maybe that's just an inconsistency. Mion grinned and showed us the location on a city guidebook. She's really prepared for this. The office is open until a quarter past five. Don't try and pick a fight with them. We have to stay calm. What? Are you talking to me, Sess? Who do you think I am? I'll cry if I have to. Our goal is to make them change their mind. That's it, Shichan. I think we can make it if we leave right now. It was past three o'clock. We'd make it before they closed if we rushed there on our bikes. But they're strict about time, aren't they? They might cook us out as soon as it's time to close. The door will close on time. But once we're inside, they'll never kick us out. Listen. Make sure you don't give in when negotiating with these officials. Officials are surprisingly tough, but unlike private citizens, they're not allowed to end the discussion on their own. So, when you feel like you can't get anywhere by continuing the discussion, don't give in. You have to dig deep and make sure they listen to everything we have to say. Uh, sorry if you guys hear a lawnmower. My mom is mowing the lawn. That would, that would make sense, given the uh, lawnmower. <laughs> It should- it, it'll probably fade in and out. Yeah, like, it's already quieting down. How do you know all that, Michan? <laughs> Who do you think I am? I represent Oreo Sonazaki, member of the mayor's social gathering and the local government monitoring committee. I speak to government officials all the time. Hey, Mion. Is it possible to save her using the influence of the Sonazaki family? Well, uh, not if I have to go through Granny. Ugh. It's impossible to get help from her. Her mind's still stuck in the damn conflict. 100 million with one spirit and stuff like that. She hates the Hojo family to this day. You're talking about Satsuko's parents, who were for the damn project? I've never met your grandma, but she needs to learn how to forgive. It's a thing of the past now. Exactly! I agree with you, Kei-chan. So the Sonozaki family can't do anything about it? Yeah, we can't. I'm sorry, old people are so stubborn. They cherish Rikachan, but they don't care about Satoko. That's horrible. I can't forgive Satoko's uncle for aggressively abusing her, but I'm not about to forgive other people for quietly abusing her either. Tell those people not to piss off, Keiichi Mayabara. <laughs> I'll do that. Shall we go now? We have no time to waste. Alright. We better hurry. Let's get going. Do you want to come with us, Rika-chan? Let's go. Rena spoke to Rika-chan, who had been avoiding all conversation. She seemed to have given up all hope yesterday. It was so painful to see her so depressed. I don't know which voice to use. I'll just use, uh, looper voice and until she's, I don't know, acting again. It's just a waste of time anyway. You have to stop saying anyway. You don't know if it's a waste of time or not unless we try. You people did everything you could in your previous lives. 
But you never found a way to save her. You think this time will be different? Sometimes I really had no idea what she was saying. All I could tell is that she was being negative about the situation. Have you tried going to the Child Consultation Center already? Then we should try! Satoko-chan is important to you, isn't she? We have to try and see what happens. I'm sure Satoko-chan needs your help right now. This world is going to end soon anyway. What's wrong? We have to hurry up! Rikachama doesn't seem to be interested. So much for friends. She's so close to Satoko, but she won't even get off her butt to, butt to save her. I never thought I'd hear you say something like that. You used to hate her so much. <laughs> what? Is your brain working alright? Why would I hate Satoko? Never mind. Fine, I'll come with you people. I have nothing to do at home but drink until I pass out anyway. You're pissing me off. Are you trying to make a fool out of me? Stop it, Shichan! You stop it too, Rika-chan! Let's get together and save Satoko-chan. I'm sure we can make a miracle happen if we work together. But we need everyone to come together. We can't leave any one of us behind. We need you too, Rika-chan. Something that Rena, that Rena said must have given Rika-chan motivation. I could see a slight sparkle in her eyes. Rena had said something interesting. She said that we can make a miracle happen. It's the same thing I said when this world began. That, wait, what? Oh, are we switching to, uh, Rika's perspective then? Okay. At that time, I said I could make a miracle happen, but I didn't say how. But Rena just queerly stated that. We can make a miracle happen if we work together. Yes! Miracles can happen when we work together. And what if there is no miracle? That means we haven't tried hard enough. If we all do the best we can, a miracle will happen for sure. That's true. Ryugu-san is right. People get stronger when they help each other. You can overcome any obstacle when everyone works together. Yup. Hinamizawa was fated to be submerged underwater. But 2,000 people got together and brought an end to that destiny. Bring an end to destiny. As villagers of Hinamizawa, we all know that miracles do happen. We'll win if we work hard together. I think you have no choice but to come with us now, Rikachama. If you don't come, a miracle won't occur. Your absence will prevent it from happening. So it's going to be my fault. That's interesting. A miracle is something that we can make happen, but we need everyone's power to make that come true. Destiny can be defeated. Fate can be escaped from. This can happen with a miracle. A miracle can happen if we unite. Rena told me yesterday, you'll never come up with a solution if you think about everything by yourself. We have to talk this out together. Don't let fate get the better of you. It's as fragile as a thin sheet of paper. How can he say that without knowing how stubborn fate can be? To me, a witch trapped within fate. But for some reason, his words sounded very persuasive. He easily changed my fate to play the fishing game. In my previous life, Keiichi saved Rena from her devastating fate. As fragile as a thin sheet of paper? He's saying that the world I've been struggling in for 100 years is that easy to change? Well, to be fair, Rika, you're how old? Like, 9, 10? Tech, like, physically? Keiichi is... He's got a different mindset, too. Like, I feel like if Keiichi were the one in the loop, he would have got it, like, third try, maybe fourth. He'd just be like, okay, let's, let's do this. Uh, so Tomotake and Takano died both of the last times. Maybe I should try and do something about them. Yada, yada, yada. Hey, guys, you want to help me? I, I think I'm going to die. I, I'm kind of scared for my life. Uh, hey, Oishi, don't be a dick. <laughs> Punch Tepe in the face. Fuck you, bro. Punch him on his way back to Hinamizawa. Set up a roadblock or something. Like, 
I, I realize I'm just bullshitting, but isn't that what you kind of have to do if you're stuck in something like this? Like, <laughs> this doesn't seem like... I'm gonna make a comparison here, and it might be a little up for debate, considering the grand scale of Higurashi as a whole compared to this other show, or other series that I'm going to bring up, but the tragedy in Higurashi is not as complex as some, uh, not all, of the shit in ReZero, so... Yeah, because to be fair, there's not giant fucking whales, there's not witches with knife hands and a little summoner child, and crazy maids and fucking uh, thousands, millions of man-eating rabbits. So, maybe it's not up for debate, but if teenage boy, who's been alive for maybe only a year of looping, technically, I, I don't know how many times he's died in the show up to that point, but if Teenage Boy, he's, what, 17, maybe? If he can do that, Rika, after 100 years? I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> he is regular person and threw together an army, admittedly, of people with magical powers to kill the fucking windfish from Link's Awakening or some bullshit. Yeah, you're just like, you're the most in, one of the most influential people in Hinamizawa. And you can't even just be like, hey, you guys want to barricade the town? Maybe that'll help? Like, even just try that once. It, yeah, the fucking disaster would probably just make that futile. But come on! Come on! <laughs> There's shit you can do. You're just probably not really trying half the time. Because I, I guess really the point is of this chapter so far is that beforehand, you haven't really been trying that much. Like... Mayakashi, you tried to inject Shion. Sumihoroboshi, you tried to inject Rena, but she talked you out of it. And then you, I don't know, fought her with a mop. That's all you did. Before that, like, you reached out to Akasaka. And what'd you do in the other three arcs? Oh yeah, jack shit. <laughs> like, if Oni Kakushi were the first loop you were ever in, then that would make sense. But it wasn't, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're bullshitting. <laughs> come on. Sure, it's complicated, but come on. My point is that Keiichi would, uh, would finish this shit way faster than Rika would. Hell, Rika would probably be the slowest of everybody, and Rika's only the looper to make it a longer story. <laughs> I'm sorry for making fun of Rika, but come on. <laughs> Not like I could do any better. I would probably lose hope too. But whatever, it doesn't matter. Because it would never happen. And I hope I don't jinx whatever fucking bullshit about the universe that might exist that I don't know about. It didn't want to happen. Fuck it. Who cares? <laughs> Keiichi had made a fool out of me. Interesting. I'll go with you. That's more like you, Rika-chan. Oh, Rika, are you sure? Hanyu looked at me with concern. She wanted to warn me that I'll get hurt if I expect too much. To be fair, Hanyu's probably a role in it too, but still. I don't have any coins left to bet. I don't have anything to lose. This world is ending soon anyway. But it was the same in my previous life. I thought all was lost when Rena took over the school. But Keiichi turned everything around. He's saying that fate is as fragile as a thin sheet of paper. I've given up on this world anyway, but I'm interested. Fate will betray you anyway. I'll get hurt as I see it happen to you. Don't worry. I'm not going to get depressed anymore. I have no tears left to shed. I know that they can't save Satoko no matter what happens. That's why I'm doing this. It's the first time we've ever gone to the Child Consultation Center. Keiichi can't make any miracles happen. On his own. Hanyu spoke to me in a stern voice. Miracles are called miracles because they don't happen easily. If it can happen at any time, it's not a miracle. It's just something that was meant to be. I'm not expecting anything. I'm just interested. I'm curious how Keiichi is going to make his move after saying how easily he can change fate. Rika. Please don't hurt yourself anymore. 
That's none of your business. Get out of here! I wasn't expecting anything. I was just trying to enjoy my last week alive, like watching a TV show. But I had to admit, I was possessed by a strange feeling. It was a little bit exhilarating. I was nervous, as if anticipating something. I had felt the same way when Keiichi remembered the memories from the past in my previous life. I didn't have any coins left to make a bet, but I knew what this feeling meant. If I had a coin left in my heart, I would bet everything on this feeling. If it doesn't work out after trying every option, we'll have no choice but to give up. There's no need for us to give up! Satsuko was going to be saved! You had better prepare a queen blanket for Satsuko! She's coming back to you soon! And I'd feel bad if she didn't have a soft bed waiting for her! <laughs> I like that, Keiichi. Well then, let's go. You might tear apart fate like a thin sheet of paper after all. Yeah, right now I feel like I could take on the ruler of hell! I'm going to make them change their decision! I stood up from my seat. Keiichi is a very good speaker. That's why I never get bored with him. I've been with him for a hundred years, but he still keeps me entertained. We're going to the Child Consultation Center now. Do you want to come with us, Chie-sensei? I'm going to talk to the Board of Education. They're under the same branch of government as the Child Consultation Center. It might help if I talk to them. After all, I'm working for the public, too. That's true. They might listen to what you say. Let's have her take care of that while we take care of our business. Let's fight them. Alright. Let's go, everybody. Yeah! Even knowing that everything is doomed, part of me felt like something good might happen. Hanyu told me that it was only a waste of time. I felt the same way until a few minutes ago, but I had become much more interested. I had no idea what would happen. I wanted to see how Keiichi was planning to defeat this destiny. I raised my fist in the air along with them and hurried to the exit. As for Satoko, she didn't come to the school again today. Tepe called the school and told them that she still has a fever. He said that he's going to keep her home for a few days until she gets better. Chie said that she thinks Tepe knows she called the Child Consultation Center. He must be worried that Satsuka will rat him out if he lets her go to school. I don't want to think about it, but it's possible that Satsuka has visible bruises by now. That could also be why he won't let her go to school. Everything was happening much earlier. Satsuko's situation was worsening earlier than it did in my previous lives. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Let's go beat up some government officials. Alright. How long are they going to make us wait? Those people seem to be free. They should let us talk to them. Those are just general office workers. We have to talk to the actual social worker responsible for the case. I wonder if they're busy because they have a lot of cases like this. I don't know. I wish they didn't have so many issues to deal with. This world is tragic. So many kids are being abused. After 30 minutes, they finally called my name. I wrote down my name as the registration, as Mion can't let them know she's from the Sonozaki family. I'm Mayabara. My name was called. I went to the receptionist to find a uniformed older lady. She must be one of the office workers Mion mentioned. Was she really going to be the one dealing with us? Hello, Mayabara-san. I see you're here with four other friends. How can I help you today? The only thing I wrote on the registration was that I wanted to talk about Satoko Hojo. Well, we're here to talk about Satoko Hojo's case. Chie-sensei from the Hinamizawa branch school called and made a report yesterday. We would like to discuss the case. Are you her friends? Yes, we're her classmates. Would you please give me a general summary of what you wish to discuss? 
I heard that you guys put a hold on it because you determined that there wasn't any abuse happening. So we've come here today in order to explain Satoko's situation in more detail. I see. Please wait a few more minutes. And that was it from her, then. A real social worker should be coming here to talk with us. She was just asking us basic information. With that done, she was talking on the phone and explaining to someone what I just told her. What did she ask? She asked me why I was here. She told me to wait for a few more minutes. I hate waiting like this. Are those posters and advertisements you've been reading that interesting, me? Oh, she's probably acting right now. I see lots of flyers about abuse. I guess we came to the right place. Report the abuse before it escalates. Check out that slogan. Check it out. There's a bunch of posters with slogans like that in here. I guess that's what the Child Consultation Center is for. Is it any help if it's inside the building, though? Rika-chan was right. They should be posting them all over the city, not just inside the building. Maebara-sama, thank you for waiting. Please go to room number two. It's our turn now! Let's go! As we walked, we saw... We soon saw rooms numbered one through three. Hmm. I thought we were going to be talking at the counter like you do at the bank. They have individual rooms. I guess it's for privacy reasons. Most of the people who come here don't want other people listening to their conversation. But I think abuse might be increasing because people try to keep the issue quiet. People tend not to talk about their family issues. Room number two. It's this one. As I knocked, I heard the voice of a man telling me to come in. Uh, hello? It was a very small room. Well, I should say it was narrow. It wasn't wide, but it was very long. There was a counter in the middle, which split the room into two. The man was sitting on the other side of the counter. He told us to take a seat, but there were only two chairs. I sat down, since we registered under my name. Mion wouldn't sit because she felt that the Sonozaki sisters shouldn't be in the front. Rena tried to offer the seat to Rika-chan, but she refused too, so Rena ended up taking it. It was such a tiny room that it was better for us to take a seat. It was very cramped with the five of us. I'm sorry. We usually expect to see the parents, so we only have two chairs. I understand that. So, how may I help you today? Should I do the talking? Uh, well, we're students from the Hinamizawa branch school, and we're Satoko Hojo's friends. The school reported that she was being abused at a child consultation center, and I believe that a social worker went to her house last night. We heard that you put a hold on her case. We're here today so we can explain to you how urgent the matter is. Mio nodded. Seemed like I was doing okay so far. What are you trying to explain to us? Will you please tell me? Well, I know it's only been two days since her uncle took her away, but it's only a matter of time before he starts hurting her. In fact, Satago suffered terrible abuse at the hands of her uncle last year as well. We believe it's only a matter of time before that happens again. So we would like for you to save Satago from her uncle before it does. But from what we understand, the Child Consultation Center has decided to wait and see, right? Are you going to neglect her? I can't believe that you left her there just because she's not getting physically abused. Who's going to be responsible when she gets really hurt? Shion probably didn't like how politely I was speaking to him. She was already flaring up with rage at the social worker. Looked like Mion didn't want her to tear into him. However, she let Shion finish, as she'd get even more furious if we tried to stop her. The man seemed to be used to people losing their temper, and he continued without reacting to Shion's outburst. I would like to make it clear that we are still working on her case. The results are still pending. We are not abandoning or neglecting her working on her case. They're not abandoning her. They're currently... reviewing options, I suppose? While their mature phrasing made me start to think it might be rude and harsh to say they were abandoning her, Rena quietly opened her mouth. But you left her there without doing anything last night. No one can ever fool Rena. Taking their time to review options was the exact same thing as abandoning her. The fact is, they left her in that house without taking any actions to prevent her from being abused. We sent a social worker to her house, and they met with her guardian. 
We cannot talk about the case any further for privacy reasons. However, we are not neglecting her. We are going to look after her and her father so they can have a healthy life together. He's not her father. He's her uncle. Are you sure you really did an investigation? Excuse me. Uh, you're correct. They're uncle and niece. Anyway, we'll be directing them so guardian and yeah, we'll be directing them so guardian and child can form a healthy relationship. Shion had pounced on his mistake immediately. I didn't think she needed to be so snappy, but at this point, I was starting to understand how different their sense of urgency was from ours. Well, excuse me, but Satsuko was living a happy life before, without any support from her uncle. First of all, her uncle disappeared from her life for a full year prior, and now he's returned and kidnapped her away. Isn't that a crime? It wasn't a kidnapping. It's the law that a child must live where their guardian appoints them to live. According to Article 821 of the Constitution, the legal guardian of a child is... He neglected Satsuko for one year! How can he still be considered her guardian? Shion, that's what the court decided when her parents died of the curse of Oyashiro sama Are you serious? That guy is her legal guardian? Yes. I don't know the specific article of law it's written in, but minors must abide by their guardians. In other words, every child has a guardian. They have to have one. That's Article 818 of the Civil Code. When Satsuko's parents died, her uncle and aunt automatically became her guardians? Yes. The closest relative gets custody. Seems her aunt and uncle were Satoko's only relatives. If Satoko and Satoshi refused them, they could have had a different guardian, though. But they were the children of the Hojo family, the enemy in the dam conflict. No one was going to take care of them. They were different from Rikachama. Lots of people wanted to be her guardian, but Father Kimiyoshi got custody of her. I knew that the Hojo family was in favor of the dam project, and the whole village hated her family for that reason. But I thought everything was over after they canceled the project and Satoko's parents died. Was I aware of the difference? The difference between how the villagers treat Satoko and how they treat Rika-chan? The villagers don't abuse Satoko like her uncle, but maybe there were small thorns left in the village, and they were stinging Satoko occasionally. I can't say this too openly, but Satoko's family had more assets than her uncle's. And by becoming her guardians, they gained control over those assets. That's why they shamelessly took over Satoko's home. Do you know where they used to live? It was this ridiculously tiny place. That's horrible. But this guardian neglected Satoko-chan for over a year, right? Can he still claim custody of her? Can he? Well... In Part 4, Chapter 4 of the Civil Code, there are provisions for the loss of custody. The man opened a thick book on the counter and showed us that page. I didn't completely understand what it says on there, but it seemed that a parent can lose custody when they're being irresponsible. So the law can take away the right to be someone's guardian. Wait a minute. It says something about court. Let me see. At the behest of the child's relatives or public prosecutor, the family court may make a ruling for the loss of parental authority. What the heck is this? So we'd have to sit around and wait for a family court's ruling before he can lose custody? That's too slow! Well, if something urgent happens, we can temporarily protect her under our custody. We will also need approval of the family court in that case. Here, um, Article 834 for the loss of parental authority. Doesn't this apply to Tepe Hojo? It is a fact that the Guardian, Tepe Hojo, abandoned his responsibilities as Guardian for over a year. What is the Center's opinion on that? I can't answer for privacy reasons, but the Center requested an explanation on that matter as well. And you accepted his explanation, so you decided to wait and see? Like I've mentioned, we are currently working on this case. The safety of the child is our number one priority, and we will make sure that she will have a healthy lifestyle in a safe environment. We weren't on the same page at all. They just weren't understanding the urgency. I've never met this Tepe guy. I only know about the situation based on what my friends told me about last year, and what Chie-sensei told us. But I still understood very well. I understood that something really bad was going to happen if we didn't take any action right now. She was being abused by her uncle and aunt last year, too. Are you sure that the same uncle can take care of her? 
You still have the records from last year, don't you? I can't discuss her past record with you for privacy reasons. But we are taking everything into consideration. She didn't come to school yesterday, and she didn't come today either. He called the school and told them that she has a cold. But don't you think it's a bit odd that she hasn't come to school since he showed up? That's true. But then she really might be sick. I think we should keep our eyes on her and see what happens. We just know that Satsuko doesn't want to be with her uncle. Her uncle is forcing her to stay with him. Our social worker spoke with the child and made their decision after doing so. So that's it, isn't it? Are you not taking this case seriously because you made a false report long ago? I cannot talk about that for privacy reasons. We're taking everything into consideration. Satoko was telling you that she's not being abused because she feels guilty about her brother Satoshi. She may have told you that she's not being abused, but I don't believe that statement. Do you know that people can lose the will to seek help when they have depression? Ah! Stop making excuses and hurry up and save Satoko! I'm not going to forgive you people if something happens to her. She'll end up hurt if you don't do something about this while I'm still asking politely. Stop it, Shion. You're making us look bad. I don't know what her uncle said to the social worker, but he's a violent guy. Please, don't be fooled by him. I just wanted to make that clear. So please, speak with her social worker and persuade them to make the call to save Satoko at once. We ask that you do this for us. Some of us were getting emotional. But Mion calmed them down, and Rena summed it up nicely. I stopped speaking to see what she was going to say next. Um, you mean her caseworker? I understand your concerns. I will tell them that Satoko-san's friends... Uh, three, four, five... Five of her friends came here and made an appeal to us. We will continue to work closely on this case, so please let us know when you have further information. Thank you for supporting the Child Consultation Center. And thank you very much for sharing your valuable time with us today. Well, that was fruitless. <laughs> Although, you know, bash your head against the wall, and eventually it'll crack. We were still in Okinomiya. We were in the city park, devoid of playing children, staring vacantly up at the matter red sky in silence. I feel like they didn't really listen to our story. But they also didn't try to kick us out. He's probably just a person who deals with complaints, not the actual social worker that deals with Satago-chan. That's why he was phrasing everything the way he did. I'm trying to crack my back. Didn't fucking work. Awesome. What did you think about the whole thing, Mion? Well, felt like we were wrestling with a tree. We didn't get pushed or pulled. It was the same as talking to a wall. That's not true. He said that they will forward our information to the social worker. Like I said, he doesn't know Satoko-chan in person, so he didn't really have any stake in it himself. So you think we accomplished something today, Rena? I don't think it was a waste of time. But I don't think our passion will be understood by the actual person who's working on the case. He'll just tell them that Satoko Hojo's five friends came and requested for them to take her under their custody. What about the social worker? Can we talk to that person directly? I don't know. I heard it's a very tough job. I think it'd be difficult for us to meet him or her in person. Someone even threatened to hurt them if they didn't do anything while she was still asking them politely. According to Mion, there are lots of problematic clients who show up at the Child Consultation Center. It's not a rare thing for them to get an aggressive visitor like Xion. It's so difficult to tell them how passionate we are. They might treat us coldly if they took our passion for simple anger. I thought you were used to talking with government officials, Mion. Can't you talk to them instead of me? It's not that she's good at talking. They just listen to her because she's Mion Sonazaki. You saw how they treated us today. If she announced herself as a Sonazaki, we wouldn't have been in such a small room. We would have been speaking to the manager in the reception room. Right? Mion gave a vague smile and didn't comment. Mion's greatest weapon is her family name. Without that weapon, she's just as ordinary as the rest of us. I shouldn't be thinking about this. But if the Sonozaki family forgave Satoko's family, it would be really easy for them to save her. So... 
The Sonozaki family still hates the Hojo family. No one has publicly stated that we hate them. But it runs pretty deep. That hag of a grandmother is the one who hates the Hojo family. Her opinion hasn't changed since we were in the middle of the dam conflict. It's been so many years, but she still can't let go of the past. Stop it, Chi-chan. Satoko-chan is Satoko-chan. She's our precious friend. It doesn't matter what her last name is. Shio went quiet, and there was silence for a while. Rena was right. Just like how Satoko's last name doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what Mion's last name e is either. The important thing is that our friend is being abused right now. We'd have to do everything we can to save her from that situation. We all looked up at the sky as we listened to the sound of cars passing by. We all felt hopeless. We had no idea what to do. Was what we did today going to help Satoko at all? Would have been better if they just kicked us out. That way, we could have been angry with them. But after being treated politely like that, we had no choice but to back off and see what they were going to do. We were forced to just wait and see what happens. Everyone was trying to figure out what our next option was. I couldn't expect Chie-sensei to tell us that everything was taken care of at the Board of Education. That would be too good to be true. What should we do next? I muttered to myself, hoping that someone would respond with a good idea. But the silence reminded me that everyone was just as stuck as me. Keiichi. Rika-chan. I'm sorry. I was running my mouth off. But I have no idea what to do now. I don't believe this. What? As I looked at her, I realized that the expression on her face was stronger than ever. You told Shion yesterday. You didn't have a good idea at that moment. But you said you would figure out something. You told her to trust you. So I... trusted you. I'm not going to believe it. I'm not going to believe that you would even mention that you have no idea. I'm not going to believe that. I could see tears in her eyes. Rika-chan was sure that I could do something about the situation. You said it. You said that fate is as fragile as a thin piece of paper. I'm going to believe your words. I still believe you. Because... You can easily defeat fate. So... Please help. Help us escape from this fate. Help Satoko. Help her. A tear rolled down from the corner of her eye. My heart was feeling the same way. Damn it, damn it, damn it! An innocent girl was becoming a prisoner of a tragic fate. She desperately needed help. I told them that they could trust me. In other words, that they could count on me. That they could bet on me. Betting is not an easy thing. If I lost, they'd lose their coins too. What does it mean to trust someone? It's about making a bet on that person. It's about betting a coin. It's about betting hope. Trusting someone is tantamount to placing your hopes in them. I told Shion yesterday. I told her to trust me. I didn't say it just because. I knew that those words meant something very serious. But now, after betraying Rikachan and seeing her tears, I finally realized just how serious it is. I look at Shion. She was in a rage again. Mion tried to calm her down, but she didn't have any ideas either. How about Rena? She's always very reliable in a situation like this. I expected to see her strength. However, Rena also looked depressed. We didn't even know if what we did was a meaningful thing. Rena looked down with a devastated expression on her face since she couldn't come up with another option either. Damn it. I have to do something for them. Rena's blue fire will melt iron. Mion can be strong when the wind is in our favor. Shion is the same way. They will move forward strongly when the wind is backing them up, but they grow weak when the wind is blowing against them. Despite the whole situation, Rikachan still believes in us. She believes that we can do something if we all come together. That's right. We all agreed. We said to each other that we can make a miracle happen if we all work together. But am I? 
If Mio, Rena, rather, I can't talk. If Rena is the blue fire, I'm the red fire. I burn brightly and give strength to everyone. That's right. I'm Keiichi Mayabara. I'm the magician of words. I have to motivate everyone. The blue fire won't light up unless the red fire does too. When the fire is lit, there will be wind. Mion and Shion will become stronger too. Thank you. You just made me realize something, Rika-chan. Now the flames inside me are really starting to blaze. Keiichi. We can't give up now. We're members of the strongest club ever. Nothing can stop us when we get together. I can't become depressed over a small thing like this. Rika-chan woke me up. I just realized how serious it is to have people trust in me. Rika-chan knew our personalities well, and she figured out just who she should motivate first. Wow, oh, I'm really starting to burn up. Hey, Mion! Stop being depressed! This is where we're supposed to get angry, man! Everyone looked at me with wide eyes as they turned at my powerful voice. They were both surprised by my sudden shout, and waiting in anticipation at the vigor of my call. More and more clearly, I could see it. This was Keiichi Mayabara's role in this club. I don't think we did anything at the Child Consultation Center. Just like Rena was saying, they're just going to forward a small note saying that the five of us made a visitation. But being treated like that is what the fires of our anger. You're right. Feels like they gave us the cold shoulder. We were trying to get them to realize how much danger Satsuko was in. We have to fight now. We have no time to be sitting all depressed in the park. But Keiichi Kun, what are we supposed to do next? <laughs> Don't tell me that you think we have no more options left. If this was a club activity, you guys would be losing right now. <laughs> this is fun. I was feeling depressed too, but now I've got a burning passion in my heart. I felt like I was cheering myself up. Why was I being so sad? If I wanted to save Satsuko, I had no time to rest. This was like the final seconds of the last round in a boxing match where we were at a disadvantage. If I stand here stupefied, I'll lose my indecision. So the only option is to press the attack. Was I supposed to give up just because I couldn't knock out the opponent with one punch? No! If I couldn't take him out in one, I'd have to throw two or three punches. I'd have to try until I could finally knock him out. You're saying that we're going to go there tomorrow? Close, but not exactly. <laughs> I... I have no idea what's on your mind. <laughs> but it sounds very interesting. It isn't like our club to cry ourselves to sleep. We need to turn this headwind around. Yes, Mion's getting her willpower back too. That's right. I agree with Keiichi Kun. I'm ashamed that I was so depressed. Let's fight! What exactly are you trying to do? <laughs> Remember, everyone? That man really pissed us off today. But he also told us what our next option is. He never thought he was giving us a hint. He made a huge mistake. On top of that, that next option is something that I'm really good at. Oh... Dun dun dun! Meanwhile, Shion's still confused. <laughs> Alrighty. No tip? Oh, two tips. Receptionist snow and the bank book frustration. Okay. Achievement unlocked, fire burning deep within. Neato. Alright, receptionist note. No. Date, year. Subject, about Satoko Hojo-san. Oh, shit. That, that means number. <laughs> okay, so he's not filling out the heading because, I don't know, not taking his job seriously. Visitor, Keiichi Mayabara and four other friends. They are requesting protection for Satoko Hojo-san to save her from being abused by her uncle. Already being dealt with? I'm cleaning out the refrigerator, so please remove your personal belongings by this evening. Fucking... Kick that dude in the face. 
That's just like the fucking psychologist note from Sumihara Boshi. Christ. Are they the same dude? Like, <laughs> he saw Rhino and was just like, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Okay, well. <laughs> Tepe suspected that Satoko was hiding more money somewhere. But in reality, she had none at all. Tepe had asked her how she survived until now. But she told him that she didn't have to use any money because she was living with her friend. Didn't Kimiyoshi give them money? Or was it someone else that did? Tepe had made some money off of illegal gambling. While he had some of that money saved up, he had no intention to use it on living expenses. Because he's very responsible. However, there was no way Satago didn't have the money. Tepe was convinced of that. Tepe's wife, Satago's aunt, must have taken away the family bank book when Sat Satago's parents died in the accident. Does his wife have a name? They they've always been referred to as, like, Satago's aunt, or Tepe's wife, or Satoshi's aunt, like, ah. <laughs> but her aunt also died last year, and Satoshi is gone too. That means Satago should have hidden the bank book somewhere. However, no matter how much he threatened her, she told him that she didn't know anything about it. He continued to question Satago, still believing that she was hiding it somewhere. He couldn't beat her, because her teacher in the child consultation center would suspect him. So he wouldn't beat her. Instead, he spoke to her in a loud and violent voice, and broke furniture in front of her. <laughs> Threatening people like that is Tepe's forte. However, Satoko continued to claim that she had no clue about the bank buck. She didn't seem to be lying. After destroying the whole living room, leaving Satoko frightened like a scared little animal, Tepe finally believed that Satoko had no idea where the bank book was. In that case, where could it be? Tepe had two ideas. One was that his wife hid it somewhere in secret. The other was that Satoshi took it after his wife's death and hid it somewhere else. Either way, he was certain that it was hidden somewhere in this house. He told Satoko to clean up the mess he made in the living room and started searching around the house. Tepe was starting to get bored with Satoko. He'd heard that Satoko's parents had a lot of money saved up, but his wife had taken control of that money herself. Since his wife had been quite thrifty, he was sure that she left the bank book somewhere without using it. Once he got his hands on that money, he could move somewhere else entirely. Tepe was still acquainted with a few people from the gambling spot in Gogura. The people he used to help out are still hanging around that area. They still owe him. They should at least let him crash there. It was great that Satoko takes care of all the chores around the house, but Tepe feels, felt uncomfortable about being watched by both the school and the consultation center. Tepe, all too aware that he's a man of violence, couldn't stand living with Satoko without being violent towards her. The more he suffered, the stronger his urge to beat up Satoko grew. Since Tepe only knew joy through forcing others who resisted to submit, Testing to see how violent he could be before the help with Satoko uh, resisted him was something he was excited to try eventually. Still upset over the visitation by the school teacher, Tepe promised himself that he would destroy Satoko's life before leaving the village. <laughs> Great, dude. Alright. Dude, do do. Okay. Ba ding, ba ding, ba dong. Get to class, motherfuckers. Alright. Well then, I guess that means this is going to be it for this episode. Not quite an hour, but hey, at least without much stalling, I managed to break 50 minutes. So that's good at least. <laughs> eh, whatever. That's gonna be it for this episode, guys. If you liked it, then be sure to press the like button. And if you didn't like it, then fuck you too. Remember to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my videos and stuff. And as always, my name is Godzi, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye! Yeah.